Hello and farewell, just kidding. Um, let's just talk about the fucking Genshin Impact special program. It's exciting, 5.0, not long. Um, but there's not really much to complain about, to be honest, and the, really the thing I want to talk about was the state of the game and whether I can actually recommend it for beginners or returning players or, or what. And for a while it has issues with Genshin Impact, so I'm technically known as the Genshin Impact controversial take, taker. I don't know what you call it. Um, but funny enough, I just don't seem to have the right takes, and I don't really care, to be honest. You dispute it in writing, or you don't. That's it. That's the only thing that could change my mind. Having said that, Natland's updates as a TLDR are pretty damn good, and they're enough to say that I can recommend the game for beginner and returning players, and even for veteran players on the fence. Um, I haven't seen it yet, like, because obviously that one's been released on the 20th of August. Um, I don't know if the game's going to be any better or not based on that, but from what we've seen, it seems to be improving very much so. And there's so many little things I could go into detail about, like the specialties, the artifacts, um, what is it? Um, it gets you substats and the main stat, like two substats, which is Press if that's something of a one quest aurel immediately. That makes it so much better. It's like, well, finally. Because it was ridiculous how bad the artifact grinding was in, in one quest aurel currently. We just suffer from shit relic systems and stuff. It's the artifact system of one quest aurel for anyone on a rare. Uh, but yeah. Other than that, there's also I think certain accessibility things like more drops, uh, increased wild level, which can increase drops apparently. Um, also, apparently, boss materials are certain to be free at the time when you farm them on World Level Nine, which is great. So I'm definitely going to use it and try it. Um, the ex exploration seems to be a lot more improved. Um, I think what else there is. Uh, I can't think for now for some reason. I've got a bunch of notes and I'll probably link them in the comments because I do react to these updates and I only really share them when there's anything good to share. I used to share them all the time but now it's just like, uh, that's nothing special but this special program has so many things in it. There's 1500 words in this document that I wrote. It's quite crazy. These are just notes, they're not any sort of script or anything. Um, yeah, there are some things that are a bit confusing, like... Um, what was it? The, the stamina system, that was it. That wasn't explained very well. So I don't know if you have increased stamina or not. I couldn't tell. That seems to be something for new players, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, the 5 star picker is quite a big thing because it, for new players that's going to be very useful and it's worth looking at the, what the characters do how they rank so you can make, make an informed decision on their use and how good they'll be for your account for example I rolled on Tainari when he first came out because he had an actual banner and he's been a pretty good Dendro character for me he, even though he has his flaws he's definitely strong to certainly beat most content in the overworld, not necessarily Spar Abyss, when he obviously triumphs for some reason, but he's still pretty good as a gender applicator. Um, I don't think what else it was, I can't remember. But there's just some really interesting things in this update, and it leads me to ask whether. The update is actually only worth it now or not. Like, do I recommend this game now to anyone? And really, the answer I have to that is something that you really want to expect. And it comes in the form of an explanation, unfortunately. I'll try to make it simple. Now, everyone's experiences are different. 
and I definitely can't claim to speak on behalf of everyone else. So it's important to take that into account with what I say here. In my opinion, I think the game is worth it. Um, I've had ups and downs with the game from well, one start to um, Sumo, which I could be was probably the worst region for like, gameplay and exploration, even though it added Dendro, which is a really good system. It just lacked so many things, and it was crazy how bad that was. Like underground maps, which were easy to add, but they didn't until Fontaine. It's like, what the fuck are you guys smoking? Or like, what's going on? Why is this so hard to implement? And even recently, like in Simulanka, there's still the question of are they going to add collectible markers or not? Or a way to sync with like, the interactive map, which would make the game more accessible. Because I don't really want to go around checking all the markers off that I might have missed for a few Prima gems at most, or more of which I do actually need because I'm actually running low because I've been sort of required to build characters due to the end game content. Um, which brings in another issue actually, is like, how do you want to play the game? It ultimately depends on that. Because I came into the game thinking, I only play it for the story, I don't know why this capture system is terrible. But I've actually opened up to the gameplay aspect and it can be fun, believe it or not. It can be satisfying. No matter how many times I've hit enemy elemental reactions, it's just some sort of kick I get from that. I don't know how to describe it, don't mean maybe. But parts of it have failed me. Like, as I said, in Zuma, Sumo, terrible patches. Like, it's crazy how bad some of them were. And players won't admit this because they're delusional most of the time, I have to say. Um, there are some who have sense, but not all of them. But it can vary from player to player, but I, in my opinion, I don't think an inaccessible game is a fun game. But on the other hand, going back to the end game thing, that's where a lot of the toxicity comes from. Because there's like a classist sort of thing going on where if you have the money to buy all, then you win. It's literally like that, unfortunately, it's paced up in... And again, players won't admit this because they're delusional, but it's very true. It's not going to stop me from playing the game, to be honest, because I can still get more enjoyment elsewhere. Like, the events are fun sometimes, and the stories are good. But the stories rarely fit on me. Only recently, like, um, Emily's, I just felt a bit, eh, about it on the fence. Meanwhile, it's like Nouvellettes and Freenas and um, uh, Tamari, that's it. one. They're really good stories. But yeah, but the end game of like Spiral Abyss and the Visage, uh, no, not Visage, Imaginary Infector. Visage is the thing that ties into uh, the Echoes thing. That's also terrible because you have to build a character properly. Not fun. And that's why they're toxic players. You see it in every game. Uh, yeah, like, when I started it, I never expected to be diving into the end game. I don't play the end game because I enjoy it. It's because I want to get better characters, and because characters are like pretty much crippled from the day they're released. Or even someone like Nuvelo's Jubilee I've had. Whilst he does most damage. We know that he's going to be Paracraft one day, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, come on. The only characters who can't be Paracraft are healers, and that's a fucking crazy thing to think about, because nobody has really been Paracraft. All healers have a place, with the exception of Baizu, who pretty much changes everything, and Zongli, who obviously shields you instead of heals you, although he has his own problems. But yeah, it's like crazy, and also, to an extent, sub DPS and support options haven't been changed much either. And it is still stupidly overpowered. Xiaoling is still overpowered. Jingju is still overpowered. Um, you know, but main DPS characters are different fucking. I don't know what you call it. A different bowl of tofu, I guess. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good analogy. But again, the main issue with in the game is just how difficult the content can be and how much you need to build up your characters. 
For, for example, we actually first installed the recent abyss as of the 16th of August, and that was tough. Well, I was about 20 seconds away from failing it on several occasions, but even though that's like pretty good in terms of premium account standards, um, it's not the best, and that's partly the problem, really. If you're struggling that much in a spiral abyss, that means that the game's failed to do something right. Because if you have this much game experience as I have, even though I do suck in certain areas, I can't see enemy attacks all the time. Also because I have itchy fingers which you can't rebind for some reason. I sometimes click sprint instead of something else, so when I'm playing new for I'll interrupt his attack. Which fucking sucks. And that takes a lot of time off the run because you pretty much do thousands of damage as him. Um, there was something else that I just remembered but I forgot again. Uh, the culture I guess I could talk about. The culture is still problematic, even with these new changes in that one. Even though the weapon banner is better because you only need one free point, it's still not ideal because the weapon banner is a fucking scam. You only really need it if you want to maximise a character's potential. Like I did that with Nuvalet because I knew that he'd do more damage, and so much so that it'd make it worth it in the end. But I won't do that with like Farina or something because it's just not worth it. I did do with Farina's weapon, and it did increase our damage, that's why I did it. I think it was someone else. Um, who was the other? Novia, that's it. Because Novia's a really good Jerry character, she's one of the most powerful characters in the game, in my opinion. And she's also easier enough to play, not with bad internet, I will say that. I forgot to mention that in my beginner's tier list, but you can check out somewhere. You can probably search for it. Be the first bit that comes up, I think. But she's strong and it's not worth getting her weapon if she does not much damage as a free to play. Like she's doing 250k fucking damage with her skill, and that's like a quarter, maybe a bit more, depending on the boss of like health bars. That's insane. That's what I mean by the weapon banner being a scam. And I thought I saw something in the uh, the live stream where they changed the one wish to like um, a quaint fates, fates, which are the uh, the uh, fates you get pretty much free, or when you level up a character. Um, they're on the battle pass. Uh, yeah, they're just when you ascend a character as well. But I thought I saw you can see use one wish for weapons, which makes sense to an extent. If only had ten wishes, or you can just choose which one. Then it'd be worth it. Like, hello? Why make the same currency for this? Like, it don't, don't make any sense. Like, for us players who have, like, collected these, well, I haven't. I've just spent them because I'm desperate. Then I've got something to use it on. And also, because there's so many gacha weapons now, it makes no sense why you can't distribute them anywhere else. That's one of the fucking batshit crazy things about this, which really makes me mad. They've somehow made the weapon battle better and worse, and yeah. Like, you're better off with more characters and weapons oftentimes, because the characters will do more damage, and it depends on the character, to be honest. But they don't synergize with their weapons all the time, like my Tarnari only does well, I forgot to mention. Because it's a 5 star weapon that I don't think it's even in the sound of all anymore. Um, they can still do decent damage free to play. And again, that just means that you don't need them. And I was even looking at you and me a long time ago and thinking Azuma was still a thing. Maybe it was Azuma actually. Because I wanted a new pyro character who can actually do damage. I wish I'd rolled on Hu Tao or Alakina instead, but she did decent enough damage for you to play with the Rust at all five. Um, although you needed to have rolled on the weapon, also, I forgot to mention, I just realised it makes it really inaccessible as well to get these weapons. So I have all the old weapons because I've rolled on them prior. 
but now you can't get them as a beginner player and that's fucking insane because there's so many weapons in the pool you just can't get them what like, hello it, why isn't there an epistolized pulse for like a fucking set like, poor weapons either for that patch or even for like anything really but god why it's just really bad so yeah um there was something else but i can't remember what that was um yeah, I guess the different ways you can play the game, I think that was the only thing I forgot to mention because I sort of went on a tangent. You can play the game different ways, of course, but you just play it how you want to play it. It's not up to anyone else, and I think a lot of players get lost in telling players how they should play. Like, yeah, but I think it only matters when you're sort of complaining to an extent, but like, everyone's wrong and everyone's right in that sense. I remember when I posted a video about my um, a glitch in the original Golden Apple Archipelago, which is an old event, and the players were only complaining about my damage as the Uke. My big farm is artifacts were over two knots at that point, and players were complaining like, "You're not doing enough damage. How are you supposed to beat?" And it's like, "What do you mean? Like, farm this for two knots? That's what you told me." Like, no, you just suck, or something like that. It's like, okay, if you just told me it was the damage, not the skill. It's the delusional mindset that a lot of Genshin Impact players unfortunately have. And I'm not going to judge anyone for doing the like, low damage or anything. Because I understand that this artifact system is bullshit. It's going to be better now, but I don't think it's going to be as good as it can be. Like, also, the fight. Like, this artifact system, like the only things that are going to be valuable are rarer artifact things like elemental mastery and uh, damage bonuses, elemental damage bonus. Those are the only things that are going to be useful for this artifact. I forgot what it's called, elixir. I'll just call it artifact elixir. Those are the only useful things for it. It's like your system has to be really bad to have that. Oh, Jesus Christ, on, on other games when you get a character you just have them, you don't have to gear them or anything, and I'll be happy with that if that was in Genshin Impact, if there was a mode for that even, like, even like a system like in Onkai Star Rail, where in their recent Divergent Universe you can use any character you want, because it ranks them and gives them an artificial artifact set of relics or even, and also the relative weapon, like, it's not hard to do. And because that's player, more players are finding it accessible to do. It's like this is a no-brainer. I really, I think it should only apply for like certain in-game stuff. I think I don't know. It's different ways to balance it. I can't comment on it really. But yeah, play the game who you want to. It's like you can play story, you can play uh, combat, anything. You can even just explore, and that's it. But I think I think some of it may be locked. I could could be wrong. Yeah, it's that simple, really. There's nothing really stopping you from just trying it out and seeing what you feel like after ten hours, twenty hours, or whatever. It's certainly not for everyone, and I think mentioning about players failed to mention that. I think the player base is mostly minors, and that's probably why. But there are a lot of adults who play it, myself included, who find the story genuinely interesting and the gameplay partly interesting too. So yeah, I think that'll be the only video I'll make on this side, to be honest, until something big comes around. Um, there's definitely a lot to consider. I'm sorry I couldn't simplify it, but it's a very complicated topic. Yeah, see who's going around, I guess.